My name is Jan Rüger and I'm the head of the Department of History, Classics and Archaeology at Birkbeck. This video message follows an earlier one which we sent out 10 days ago when our building in Russell Square had to be closed down for the foreseeable future due to the lockdown. Our first step then was to move our teaching online so that you could continue with your studies. It's been inspiring to see how you and my colleagues across the department have adapted. More and more resources are becoming available across the country and internationally, making it possible for your studies and our research to continue to flourish. Our second step, I suggested in my previous message, would be to establish the best possible solutions for assessments, coursework, dissertations and exams. On Friday, the last day of the spring term, we were able to send you an email which announced a number of important changes. Our aim in making these changes has been to create as much flexibility as possible to allow you to continue with your studies productively and progress towards your degrees. I am here now to talk about the most important ones of these changes. Crucial for our undergraduates is that we will not be holding physical exams this summer. Instead, we will provide assessment papers online, which you will have 48 hours to complete from the time when they are released. These will be available according to the original exam timetable so that the exam dates as such have not been changed. But this will be an open book assessment. If you choose to, you can still sit down and write your answers in three hours. We understand though that for many of you, it will not be possible to allocate three hours in one single block, which is why we're using a combination of a 48 hour window and word limits. You will receive detailed guidance nearer the time and there will be revision classes online early in the summer term, allowing you to prepare well in advance. Importantly, you, our undergraduates, will take these assessments on a no detriment basis. That means the online assessment can only be used to raise the overall mark for your module, but not lower it. In recognition of the significant disruption which you all have faced and continue to face, we have adjusted all undergraduate and postgraduate deadlines. You will find the details in the email which we sent you and also in our COVID-19 response room, the Moodle area in which you will find everything you need to know about online studying across the subjects covered by our department. For both undergraduate and postgraduate degrees, our exam boards will take into account the unprecedented circumstances which affect the entire current cohort of students. It will not be necessary to submit a claim for mitigating circumstances in order to make a case um, for the performance of in your coursework or dissertations to have been affected. However, you are encouraged to make a claim if you cannot keep to the new extended deadlines. These claims will be dealt with sympathetically and we will not accept um, that evidence, uh, we will not expect that evidence um, uh, will always be available. For our postgraduates, dissertations are a particular concern. Given the closure of libraries and archives, it may no longer be possible for you to work with the sources you had planned for your dissertations to be based on. We strongly encourage you to discuss with your supervisors what the best options are. We understand that some of you uh, may want to continue with your original topic even if that means waiting until re the relevant archives open again. We will not penalize any dissertations submitted late for that reason. But we also recognize that many of you will want to continue with your dissertations and submit in time to complete your studies as planned. Given that it could take some time for archives and libraries to open again, we recommend you discuss this with your supervisor as soon as possible. While this route, namely trying to accommodate the closure of archives through the reframing of your research, 
is very much viable and recommended for our MA and MRes students, it is not feasible for the majority of our PhDs. Most of you, our research students, will have been in touch already with your supervisors or second supervisors, mentors, talking through how best to restructure your research and writing plans so as to prioritize other areas of your work while libraries and archives are closed and traveling is impossible. We recognize that not all of you will be able to submit your doctoral dissertations by the deadline originally envisaged. The key question in many cases will be funding. Some funding bodies, including the Chase Consortium, which we are part of, have already announced that extensions can be granted and that they will fund them as far as possible. Others have yet to confirm the extent to which they can accommodate extended submissions in their funding. We will keep you posted, but please do talk to your supervisors now, if you haven't already, to discuss the weeks and months ahead. Whatever history, classics or archaeology programme you're enrolled in and whatever level you're studying at, thank you all for your patience and understanding over the past two weeks. In normal times, it would have taken us easily a term, I think, to make all the changes which I have summarised in this message, given that they all have to be, of course, consulted about and approved. In the event, it took us just about a week. I could not be prouder of my colleagues who have made it possible and you, our students, who have been so supportive, but also our team of administrators who have kept things going. All of us at the department are determined to make it possible for you to continue productively with your studies and gain your degrees. As I said in my previous message, we bring together an unparalleled expertise in the history of diseases, health, and the medical humanities. Some of you may have seen my colleague John Henderson's article in History Today just out. He asks what the early modern experience of plague and isolation tells us about our current crisis. Colleagues across the department will do this in their research and training, working with you to make sense of the extraordinary circumstances around us. More than ever before, past and present are bound up with one another in your studies, which I can assure you will continue to thrive at our department. As always, we will keep you informed by email and via Moodle. Thank you very much and take care of yourselves.